Hello Year 9, in this Grade A Calculator Part 3 we're going to look at adding some basic scientific functionality to a calculator. If we begin the lesson and look at the criteria on your team's assignment, you're asked to look at cube, squared, round, mod, etc, etc. I'm going to look at the mod, I'm going to look at the square root and if I have time I'll look at cubing or squaring a, num a number. So to begin with, in my calculator program I'm going to duplicate my addition button. I'm going to begin with my modulus button. A modulus arithmetic in maths and computing is the remainder of a division. So for example, 10 modulus 3 would give me 1 because 3 goes into 10 three times with a remainder of 1. So I've duplicated my button. The first thing to do is go in and change the costume. And I'm just going to call this mod. And into the code, the only thing I'm going to change here is my operator. I need to, need to use a symbol for the modulus, and I'm going to use the percentage sign because we often use that in computing for the modulus. So when they click this, it's going to assign the number from the answer screen into the variable, the same as our plus button, only changing the operator. And I'm going to go into my equals feature, and I've already done it, but in here I've set my, if the operator equals to the modulus symbol, then set the answer screen to number one, mod number two. And that mod block comes from the math section. Then we go with mod. So if I hit 10, mod three, I should get one. Yeah, and we will try 11, mod three, should give me a remainder of two, and it's working. So we've got our modulus feature. Now I'm going to move on to the square root button, and I'm going to just duplicate my mod, move it into the position, go into the costume, and this is going to be SQRT. Now this one's going to be slightly different because on the code for this, we will want, well, yeah, when we click it, we will want the whatever's in the answer screen to be assigned into the number one. But the square root, we don't need our second number entered. So when I click this, it's just going to, I will want to set the answer screen to the square root of whatever stored at number one. And to get the square root, I go to my math section, choose the drop down menu here, and I want the square root, and for me it will be the square root of number one. And I'm going to test this. So clear it, I'll go for 100. I want the square root is 10, square root 10, three point something, my square root button is working. And I'll finish this with, I'm going to duplicate my mod button again. Sorry, I'll duplicate my square root button, and I look at a cubed button. But you're going to duplicate that, move it up here, change the costume. That's going to be something like X with a small two. I can change that up later with different fonts, etc. But on the code for this here, when we click the X squared button, we will, yeah, again, whatever's in this here, we'll want whatever's in the answer screen, put it into number one, and then again, yeah, we want to set the answer screen. To not the square root, I'm going to remove this and we just want to just do a simple mathematical operator which will be number one multiplied by itself and that will give me its square root. Number one multiplied by number one and I will add that in and let's test it. So I'm going to clear that, I'm going to go three square it gives me nine, clear it four square it, 16. You get the idea. So the cube button. Hopefully you can grasp the cube button. It will be a matter of duplicating this button, changing the costume, and changing the code ever so slightly. Instead of number one times number one times number one, I'm gonna to have to do another multiplying operation on it. Number one times number one, you've guessed it, times number one. And I need, I'm running out of room. I'm going to have to arrange my interface. But I've now got a cube button. So three cubed 27. You get the idea. You can cube that again. Uh, 19,683. So, folks, that is the third, the penultimate tutorial on how to get a grade A in your calculator. In the next lesson, we will look at using a dictionary to store numbers in memory so we can recall. Watch the video, pause it as you need, try and get the scientific features added to your calculator and I'll post again next week.